Mistral AI just made some exciting new announcements. This specific announcement is about making it easier to develop more complex generative AI applications with large language models. The great thing about Mistral AI is that they are developing a range of language models that you can utilize today for a variety of use cases. However, it's really hard to customize those language models for your specific use cases. So you may want to, for instance, change or improve the system message to improve how the model responds to whatever tasks you're interested in. In addition, it will be useful also to be able to quickly prototype, improve not only the quality of the outputs and how customized those outputs of those language models are, but the ability to also reduce latency and experiment with a variety of models as we develop more complex workflows like agents, for instance, with these LLMs. What Mistral AI is announcing here is their vision to how they are enabling this for developers. They announce here they are making it simpler, more efficient to customize models. And you can customize models like Mistral Large 2 and Coastral as well. And you can do this customization in different ways. You can customize them by fine-tuning these models. You can customize them by using things like few shot prompting and improving the system instruction and so forth. So they're making available all these very strong reference models, as I mentioned here. So the idea now is for developers to have these really good, strong foundation models that you can fine-tune or whatever use case you're working on. And they're trying to make it as easy as possible so you, you can iterate and continue to prototype really quickly for your application. You can provide specific domain knowledge, context, tone, whatever it is that you need to customize that particular model. So the fine tuning feature is available via their console. I am gonna show you an example of how to fine tune a model really quickly and how to use that, for instance, as an agent, how you can also test with it really fast using LeChat as well. So you can serve that model really quickly using their chat interface. Another exciting part of this release is this idea of agents. So they're mentioning here that they're introducing an early version of their agents. This wraps models with additional context and instruction for exposure on the chat or API. So I think offering both is really useful so that you can continue exploring and experimenting with your language models and you can share with your team and so on. It just makes things a lot more quicker and productive to experiment with the language models that you're customizing. The idea of agents, I don't think it's necessarily new. I believe this is very similar to custom GPTs where you're trying to customize behavior by defining a set of instructions, system instructions, and you're providing it also examples of the type of outputs that you want, focusing on the quality and so on. So you define that, you build your agent, you serve it, and you can use it for whatever component you're interested in building. Let's say you're building this agentic workflow that needs a very good research analyst. You can develop a research analyst, customize that to whatever behavior and type of output that you want. And now you have this customized model that you can leverage and you can leverage it again using the APIs. As you see what they mentioned here, is that now you can use this Mistral Large 2, which is their really large model, very capable model. I think this is one of their strongest models that you can now layer on increasingly complex workflows with multiple agents that are easy to share within your organization. So you can share them, you can test them, evaluate whatever prompts you're evaluating with. That's much easier to do now with Mistral AIs. I think this direction makes a lot of sense. It's very developer friendly as well, as you will see with some of the demos that I will cover in a bit. So they mentioned here that one of their goals is to eventually enable these agents and have the ability to integrate with tools and data sources. So let's say you wanted to connect your agents with some external database or PDF files or whatever it may be that you're interested in using with the agent or maybe some external tool like a search engine that should be easy to do. So I think the customization piece is important. And then how to integrate with tools, external tools is the next part. And that's what's coming soon. So I'm very excited about that. I'm now going to jump into the console, the Mistral AI console, where I'm going to cover two examples. So how to create an agent and how to fine tune a model. I will touch on the first example, which is creating an agent. I think this is really interesting. You can create an agent really quickly. You can specify your instructions, 
You can add demonstrations to it. You can really customize how that particular language model performs. And then you can also test it on the chat. So I'm going to show you the whole process with one use case that I've been working on recently. So I'm going to click here again. I'm on the homepage of console.mistral.ai and the platform. And then I'm going to click here on create an agent. So I have already created an agent. I'm just going to pull that agent back again here just to show you how it works. So this paper summarizer is one that I just developed like a couple of minutes ago. And you can see here that I'm using this particular model, so Mistral Large 2. And you can select any of the models that they have available. You can even select fine-tuned models that you have, so that's really neat. And you even have the legacy models as well. But I'm choosing this general purpose language model, which is Mistral 2. And then once you have that, you can define the temperature. I'm setting temperature to zero. I don't want any randomness. And then here is where you define how this model will behave, right? Similar to what you do with custom GPT, here you are defining the instructions on how you want that particular model to behave. And this is a system prompt. And what I've done here is I'm just creating a simple technical AI writer. I will give this agent or assistant a technical AI paper abstract, and it should convert that into a clear, concise, and technical summary as the examples provided. I'm going to provide examples below. Ensure you're using the same formats as in the example. That's really important as a custom behavior that I want from this model. And so I've provided demonstrations here, which is really neat. So these are the few short prompts. So I have the user input and model output. So you have to provide the pair. And I'm giving it, for instance, I'm giving it the title of the paper and also the abstract you can see here. I've given it a couple of examples. So you can see this is one example. I have given it another demonstration here. And I've given it a third demonstration here. So it's the same format. So it's a title and abstract. And then the model output is this quick summary. The summary is basically like a short title and then a concise summary of what the abstract entails. So this is just to simplify the use case, right? I'm just using abstract. But for this, you would want to use abstract and other components of the paper, such as results, findings, and so on. This is just to simplify it. And if you are interested, I actually have a data set for this. So in one of our repos where we maintain ML papers of the week, I'll provide a link in the description. You can check out many summaries that I've done myself. So all of these summaries are things that I put together. I'm not using an AI for this. My idea is how can I automate this whole process and make it much more efficient and productive for me to be able to do this type of work. And you can also find the papers. So you can copy the abstracts. Or these are just links to archive papers. So you can copy the abstract and the title of that paper, and then you can bring it back into the agent here that I'm creating. So that's how I kind of did this whole process. And once you have that, then you can create it. And when you create it, you deploy it as API. So it's available in the API to use. And then you can also deploy it in the chat, which makes this model or this particular customized agent available in the chat. So this is what I've done. So in order for you to test it now, um, you can test it down here or you can test it in the chat. So I will click on this button here, and this will take me right into the chat. So right now I'm in the chat and I have available the model itself, right? So I have the models from Mistral, and then I also have the agents that are available that I've customized as well. So what I can do here is I can just give it an input based on the type of input that it expects, right? This particular agent, I've customized it to summarize papers given the title and abstract that I'm passing to it. So I've done that already. I'll give you an example of how it looks. So this is the example I've generated. This actually saves the chats or previous chats. As I was experimenting with it, I noticed that it really struggled to give me this particular output that I really wanted. So this is the output that I wanted. Right, and something like a nice little title or short title, and then the summary in this format. Finally, I got it to work after iterating on the demonstrations a bit and the system instruction. So the system instruction that you saw is already kind of tuned. So I went through a few iterations. It was really quickly for me to iterate on it because I can just go back to the summarizer here, this agent, and I can do changes and then update really quickly. And the changes are reflected right away here. And now I can continue experimenting. One thing I noticed though, when I was experimenting with this, you have to be really specific with the instructions. I think this is common sense, but you also have to provide it more demonstrations. So I tested with two demonstrations. It didn't work quite 
so well. And then I tested with three demonstrations and finally got the format a bit better. So I think to improve this more and to make it more reliable, to always give me that format that I want, I need to give it a few more examples, maybe like five or 10 examples. So that's something to experiment with if you're working on this particular example or any example that you're working on, just keep that in mind. So that's the agent example. I'm now gonna jump into the fine tuning example here. So I can go back here to overview and we have the option to fine tune a model. I'm gonna fine tune a model and then I can select any of these models. So I've already fine tuned a few models as well. So I'm just gonna show you the process here. The first thing you need to do is you need to have some data sets. So you go to data sets, you upload data sets. If you're interested in data sets, I have data sets available. You can use my data set. So the data set that I'm using, I can go back here to the AI. I'm uploading a few data sets just to make it easier for folks to experiment and replicate some of the things that I'm showing here. And in particular, I'm using an emotion classification task here. So I have some emotion data sets. You can use this for training and it has to be in JSONL format. So this is the format that it's using. It uses messages. Then you create a list of the role, which is user role, and then pair it with the assistant role. So you have here the classification or label and the input itself, which goes under the user role. And I have a bunch of these that I've provided to the model. And so I download this data set. You can download it yourself if you want to replicate this particular experiment. And then what you do is you go back here and then upload it to this data set. It should identify this as a type instruct because that's the format that I'm using. In their documentation, you can find how you can upload different kinds of data sets, for instance, for function calling and so on. So this is the valid data set, which you can also find here. I have a valid, which is the validation data set that I'm using, this one here, and it consists of a few examples. The only thing to note is that it will throw you an error if you're using more than 20% of the training data set. So make sure that's a smaller data set and it doesn't cross that 20% threshold. So training validation data set are already here. Now I can go to fine tune models and then I already fine tuned a model, but I'll show you again the process. So I go to fine tuning of a model. I select the model that I want. I can select postural if I'm interested in a coding use case. I can select Michel Large 2, which is the more capable model, but I can also select the other smaller models like Michel Nemo, which is a 12 billion parameter model, which was developed in collaboration with NVIDIA. But I'm just gonna keep it to Michel 7B just for demonstration purposes. Now you can go to training data sets, select the training data set. You can go to validation data set. You can select validation data set. And this one is optional. You can select your learning rate here. That's something that you can adjust. This is nice because this is not something that I saw in the OpenAI fine tuning interface. And you can also select even the epochs as well. So you can select 10, seven, whatever that may be. Obviously the more epochs, the longer it will take. And then you select next and it will take you through the process. Uh, this takes a little bit of time, but I'm gonna go back to fine tune models here. And you will see that this is the model that I fine tune. I'll click on it. And here are the specifics of this particular fine tune model. So it has a base model here. I'm using this particular base model. Uh, no function calling, no fill in the middle. Those are things that you can fine tune on. And then here's the cost, as I was saying, it's like nine US. This is the number of training tokens, epochs, learning rate, and support. One option that you have here, you can archive it and you can create an agent. So if you click on create an agent, right, it takes you to the agent interface. And here's where you can create an agent on a specific fine tune model. When they say customization, this is what they refer to as customization. You can fine tune a model, you can further customize it, you can add instructions to it furthermore, and you can even add more few shot prompts examples as well, if that makes sense for you. But what I'll do here is I'm just gonna show you this agent that I built on this fine tune model that I just showed you. So this emotion classifier is an agent and I wanted to create an agent because I want it available in the chat. So this is the reason why I created one. And this one is based on the fine tune model that I just showed you, which is, you will see it right here. So I can select that and here is the particular agent. And this agent has the system prompt just to guide it a bit more. And that's something that you can add here, why not? And the more you can customize it, the more you can give it clear instructions, the better this model is gonna perform. And so this is the instruction here. And then now you can select the chat, right? And you can, it's available in API as well. I'm gonna select the chat. And now you will see that it's available the paper summarizer example, and then you have the emotion classifier example. Now I'm gonna select emotion classifier and then just gonna quickly test here. So I'm gonna say, I'm feeling very happy. So what I told this model is to specifically output 
just the emotion label alone. And it was important for me to provide it that specific instruction because when I fine tuned this model, I just gave it the input and output pair. I did not give it any specific instructions, but because now you have the ability to do that using this agent interface, you can further customize how you want this particular model to behave, which I, I think is really amazing and really interesting way of building and experimenting with these language models. So I'm gonna say, I'm very sad and say sadness. Sadness is one of the labels. Okay, that's okay, I guess. And then this one is surprise. This one is usually harder for the model. And from here, you can continue experimenting. You can run better evaluations by using the model via the API. So this is something that I plan to do with this particular model just to compare with other models that I'm experimenting with. There's also another video that we'll do that's based on the OpenAI fine-tuning interface. So I was about to do that when I saw this launch, so that's very good timing. And I'll compare how all of these models perform, right? how the Mistral uh, fine-tuned models perform compared to the OpenAI models. And I also want to kind of discuss as well these trends of building better interfaces to allow you to customize these models better, which we are seeing from all these companies. That will be it for the video. Let me know if you have any questions, if you need any of the data sets, if you need links to anything that I covered in the demos, please let me know. Other than that, that'll be it for this video. Thank you so much for listening. Please consider leaving a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't. It really helps the channel and I'll see you in the next one.